What if I told you that a natural herbal compound might be just as effective or even better than the leading antibiotic for treating SIBO? Sounds too good to be true, right? In this video, we're going to be diving into a brand new study that directly compares rifaximin with berberine for SIBO treatment. We'll break down the key findings. How effective was berberine compared to rifaximin? What happened to patient's symptoms after four weeks? And could berberine actually change your gut microbiome? for the better. Stick around to the very end because the results of this study may change the way we think about SIBO treatment. What's up and welcome to the video. I'm Dr. Daniel Ricciardi, gut health expert, licensed pharmacist, fitness enthusiast, creator of SIBO Shortcut, and the gut health supplement bloat blocker. In this video, we're going to compare how well berberine works for SIBO treatment compared to rifaximin, also known as zyfaxin. First, we're going to look at one previous study that tested herbal antimicrobials versus rifaximin for for SIBO. Then we're going to dive into this new study that directly compares berberine versus rifaximin. And as a quick disclaimer, this video is for informational and educational purposes only and does not provide medical advice. Always consult a qualified healthcare professional before making any changes to your treatment for SIBO or other health conditions. All right, let's look at this previous study that was done first. So this was a 2014 study that was a first of its kind that looked at how well herbal treatments work versus rifaximin brand name Zyfaxin for treating SIBO. And in the study, patients either two 200 milligram Rifaximin tablets, so each dose was 400 milligrams of Rifaximin. This was done three times daily for four weeks, or the alternative was patients took two capsules twice daily of one of two herbal preparations, the first one being dysbiocide and fc cidal. This combination does not actually contain berberine, but the other one, which is candibactin AR along with candibactin BR for four consecutive weeks. This one does contain berberine. And for this treatment, this included both hydrogen and methane type SIBO that they were looking at. The first antimicrobial combination did not contain berberine. What I'm showing you right here is the canabactin AR and BR, what was actually in these products. So there's 400 milligrams berberine. And then there's a couple other compounds that are berberine similar derivative type products. So it's somewhere between 400 and 500 milligrams of berberine like substances per dose. And the results of the study came out that of the patients that got the herbal therapy, 46% had a negative follow-up lactulose breath test compared to only 34% of rifaximin users. Based on the way the statistical analyses were done for this study, it was determined that antimicrobial herbs were considered non-inferior to rifaximin for treatment of SIBO. A few comments on this study though. As I mentioned, there were two different herbal regimens that were done and the results don't exactly break down which patients took which and the results they got. So theoretically, the one that contained the berberine type products could be significantly better or worse than the other one. And also berberine was just one of the antimicrobial herbal components in the compounds candibactin AR and BR. So we can't really know to what extent how important having that berberine actually was. So this study was certainly useful, definitely leaves a lot of questions still to be asked. Okay, moving ahead to this new study that I referenced that began back in 2023, you're about to see what is considered the interim analysis of the study. This means that the study hasn't been completely finished. Perhaps they're going to be doing this research with additional patients to get a bigger sample size of data, but there is some data available currently that we can look at. So in this study, as I mentioned before, they're looking at berberine versus rifaximin. Each participant will receive 400 milligrams drug twice a day for two weeks. So this means one group is going to get rifaximin 400 milligrams twice a day for two weeks, and the other one's going to get berberine 400 milligrams twice a day for two weeks. Looking at this chart right here, this is what is known as an intent to treat data set, meaning that all the patients that went into the trial are included on this, even ones that may have not fully completed the full regimen. There's a total of 25 patients in the berberine group and 21 patients in the rifaximin group. Going line by line here, breath test eradication rate of SIBO, berberine after the two weeks was at 40%, where rifaximin was at 43%. Clinical remission, pretty sure this is just talking about with asking patients their symptoms, specifically the two listed below, bowel satisfaction and abdominal discomfort. What percentage of patients said that they noticed an improvement? Berberine at 84% and rifaximin at 81%. And then this row underneath four weeks off of the medication. So they did two weeks of treatment and then followed up with four weeks of not doing anything and then evaluated the patients during this time period as well. Interestingly, the breath test eradication rate for berberine increased to 52% and then decreased down to about 29% for rifaximin. And then the clinical remission 
duration of symptoms was about the same 88% for berberine and 91% for rifaximin. And then because data gets analyzed a couple different ways sometimes in studies, what you just saw was all the data for everybody that started doing the treatment but may not have necessarily completed it. Sometimes patients drop out due to side effects. This is what's known as a per protocol analysis. So everybody that actually finished the full two weeks of treatment is included in this data set. So looking at the numbers again, for berberine, the breath test eradication rate after two weeks of medication was 36% and rifaximin was a little bit higher at 50%. Clinical remission of symptoms, pretty similar for each. But then if we go down to when the patients were four weeks off of the medication, meaning they finished the treatment, waited four weeks to get followed up on, the breath test eradication rate, interestingly for berberine, jumps up to about 56% here. And then for rifaximin, it actually dips down to 35%. Clinical remission of symptoms, including the bowel satisfaction or abdominal discomfort was pretty similar amongst the two. So the conclusion given in the study, the interim analysis of this SIBO study indicated that berberine showed a non-inferior eradication rate to rifaximin after four weeks. This basically means that when going head to head, berberine seems to be not worse than rifaximin. And then it goes on to say specific bacterial targets and limited disturbance of the microbiota network supported the application of berberine for SIBO. There were some secondary metrics looked at in the study just to see how the microbiome kind of rebalanced after using rifaximin. And it seems that after analyzing this, this may also be a potential positive for using rifaximin. A couple of my comments on this study, the dose used of rifaximin, typically in the United States, we use 550 milligrams three times daily. In this study, it was 400 milligrams twice daily. It's essentially half the dose that we would use in the US is 550 milligrams three times a day is 1,650 milligrams compared to only 800 milligrams daily. Overall, it seemed to work a little bit better than I expected. I was under the impression that if you went exact head to head, same duration of treatment, same dosage, that the berberine may not be quite as strong as the rifaximin. We don't know if this is definitely the case, but the results of this study suggest that it's pretty comparable. The other really interesting thing I noted after the patients did the berberine treatment and then waited another four weeks, there seemed to be a little bit of an additional improvement when looking at a breath test that checks for hydrogen and methane. This could be because there's not a ton of people in this trial. So maybe if we did hundreds of people instead of about 20, this may not end up being the case. But perhaps after doing the berberine treatment and then waiting, there's some rebalancing of the microbiome that's happening that may potentially be giving additional benefit. And this is just me speculating here, just to be fair. Last point, coming down to cost, depending on where you live, this rifaximin or zefaxin can be really expensive, th even thousands of dollars. So if there is something that's kind of comparable to the rifaximin and costs less than $100 a month, even when paying out of pocket, this is a good thing. Essentially, the final conclusion I would say from this video is if berberine is not on your radar whatsoever in terms of SIBO treatment, I think it's an option at least worth considering going forward. That is all for today. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, please like, subscribe, and hit that notification button so you know every time I post new content. If you're new to my channel, I post a new full-length video every Monday in YouTube Shorts throughout the week. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.